So as we do this presentation, we're going to let this guy just boot up. And uh, we'll give a demonstration of it at the end. So... Take it away? Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Ashley. This is Ben and Clarence. Our senior design project was Painter, and it's a paint delivery system. All right. So this just gives an overview of the project, and this was actually taken from our poster that's up on the fourth floor. Um, so for those of you who can't read it, it's a manually controlled wheel-driven robot which can paint images on a flat surface. So you can put it down on a large piece of butcher paper, or put it outside on the sidewalk, or on the driveway, or the street, or wherever you want to place it. And the user sends directions and painting instructions to the robot through the use of an Android device. We developed our own custom software for the robot, which Clarence will be going over shortly. Uh, Painter integrates technologies which serves as a test bed for future developments such as large and small scale autonomous vector printing. So what we have here just demonstrates um, possibilities, sort of it's a proof and concept of these future applications of the device. Hi, I'm Clarence. Um, this is uh, the front end of the application of Painter program. Um, I developed the Android application, it's called Painter Remote. Um, it runs on any uh, Android power device. Um, I'm familiar with Java, but uh, I've never done any Android development, so I got to use new concepts called like uh, the activity and intents. They are um, activities are like the main programs that are called when you run the program, and intents are system calls that you can access uh, system soft or system hardware like uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, it was developed in Eclipse using the uh, Android development tools that Google provided and an Android emulator which simulates the uh, application without actually ha having to load it on the program, on the device. And then uh, we connect to the robot um, over a Wi-Fi network and uh, initiate a secure shell uh, channel. And so I use the uh, Jcraft Java secure channel uh, libraries. Uh, this is the Painter Remote architecture. Um, the GUI consists of uh, the buttons for the directional movement, um, heading accelerometer uh, feedback, and a drawing area which shows the location of the uh, robot and um, what has been already drawn. Um, since when you press on the button, you only want to, if you press and hold to move, so we only want to send commands when the button is pressed. The controls manager handles the actual uh, SSH connection and sends commands when the relevant event happens. Um, the bitmap helper uh, sends or draws the uh, robot on the image on the application. And then this SSH connection is the communication link between the painter robot. So this slide gives a top-down overview of all the electronics on the robot itself. Clarence just was talking about the software aspect for a project, which is represented as this Android character in the top left slide. Um, on the robot, we have a Lafanera wireless access point, which, which gives us our connection to the robot itself. Uh, so we use SSH over a Wi-Fi network. And from there, um, all communications are handled by our BeagleBone, which is a younger, newer, um, less powered version of the Beagle board, which is a widely popular um, hardware development board. And the Beagle Bone is running a Linux distribution called Angstrom Linux, which is intended for small, low power, embedded applications, so it really suits um, our application in this sense. And the Beagle Bone handles all the communications between the Android software and the sensors that you see here, which is our digital compass and our accelerometer. And it also handles um, the motor drive control with the use of the motor driver, uh, effectively uh, quadruple H bridges, and also pneumatic solenoid, which controls the pneumatic pressure system. So going into a little bit more detail of our development board, uh, as I mentioned, it's called the Beagle Bone, and it features Texas Instruments' brand new processor, which came out in December. This processor is intended for industrial control applications um, and all, or as well as por portable media devices such as cell phones, MP3 players, those sorts of things. Uh, it features a 720 megahertz ARM Cortex A processor, so it's really souped up for this application. And it also features a Neon Media coprocessor. 
and part of the reason why we are attracted to this board is because of these high specifications. Uh, it gave us a rapid prototyping environment since we had so many components connecting together and we weren't focusing on one or specific hardware aspect. It allowed us to sort of redesign our project as we went along and we also hope to make use of this media coprocessor for future developments such as doing imaging analysis in real time as we're painting images. Other attractive features are, are it has three uh, pulse width modulation modules. Since we're doing independent motor control for each wheel, we need at least four PWM signals um, independently from the board itself. So these each module contains or allows you to produce two PWM signals, so that satisfies our requirements. And it also has USB uh, for USB on the go and other USB hub purposes. And we were originally intending to use a Bluetooth adapter for our wireless connectivity. However, since the processor is so new to the Linux developments, the Bluetooth drivers were very unreliable. Um, so we actually transitioned to the wireless access point. But once uh, more development goes into the, our particular distribution of choice, we hope to be able to move back into the Bluetooth realm. And we also have an Ethernet um, capability, which is how it's connected to the wireless access point. And for sort of an advantage to our sake is that it boots from micro SD card. So rather than needing any special debugger tools or like JTAG programmers or anything like that, you can just pop out the SD card and do all your development from the laptop or any other computer. And as I mentioned, it's running Anxium Linux, which um, as I said, is intended for embedded applications. And what's unique about this development environment over a microcontroller is that instead of reading and writing to memory registers to control the hardware, um, instead of reading and writing to files, which sort of takes a cue from the Unix realm, so it's a familiar um, programming environment, so it's, it's a familiar development and allowed us to bring our application up to speed very quickly. These are the two sensors I mentioned that are on Painter. On the left side, you can see our three-axis accelerometer, which is an analog devices chip. And uh, this just lists some of the notable specifications about it. Its intended applications is for small handheld devices. As you can see, its full-scale range is only plus or minus three Gs of acceleration. So things like your Nintendo Wii remotes and cell phones and stuff like that. Uh, very low power, it's a very small chip. And uh, we added this to the robot because we wanted to be able to, uh, as we record, as we log all the accelerometer data, we could keep track of the velocity of the robot and then get into or have some sort of idea of the position of the robot. Um, just a vague idea, not pinpoint accuracy, but just to help us out. Uh, and then on the right side, you can see our digital compass, which is a Honeywell chip, and this also lists some more. Uh, notable spec specifications, as you can see, it's, it's another really low chip, low power chip, really small. And um, looking at the measurement ranges of it, we see that it can get down to five milligauss resolution, which is significant. Um, the Earth's magnetic field is well above that range, so we can get high degree resolution. We can get fairly accurate um, readings, uh, one degrees at most of error, or at we can get one degrees of accuracy. Um, we were getting 0.1 degrees um, of accuracy with that chip. And we were using this to, as the robot moves through this, um, as it's draw over its drawing canvas, we can keep track of its orientation to true north. So that way, if we wanted it to move on its own, uh, let's say it hits a rock or something and sort of you know stumbles and it's pointing a different direction, well, we would be able to read that sensor, say, hey, look, I'm not pointing towards north anymore, and correct itself so it's facing and staying on its path that we gave it. And then this is the motor driver that we're using. We are using this Toshiba chip. Uh, two of them actually, each chip has two H bridges in it, so we can control all four motors independently. Uh, our motors draw only about 0.4 amps of current nominally. Um, so this, the average current that this chip can output satisfies those requirements. It also has a much higher um, maximum current peak uh, limit or rating, so this sensor fits our application very well. And after this point in time, um, this really is bulk of the electronics and the firmware part, and this sort of moves into the more mechanical realm where Ashley's going to pick up.
Okay, so the basic overview would be the aluminum frame, the power supply, your wheels, motors, the spray system, and the electronics. Okay, so for the frame construction, it's built from aluminum. We designed it on AutoCAD. We wanted it to be about the size of a piece of paper, so 8 by 12 inches and 8 inches high. And it's just the top plate that holds all of the electrical components, then the base plate what holds all of the pneumatic devices. So. Our power supply is a 12 volt gel cell battery, 7.5 amp hours. It's five pounds. It's a, it's a big battery, but we originally wanted to use D cell batteries, but they couldn't produce enough current for our application, so this is a nice solution. Okay, so for wheel and motor selection, we chose Mechanum wheels for omnidirectional movement. And each is powered by its own motor, has an H bridge, so it has bi-directional independent movement. And for selecting our motor, the most important aspect was finding a motor with enough torque to be able to drive our robot. It's a large robot. So in order to estimate this, I used an equation from a motors and drives book from a class I took. So I estimated the weight of the robot to be about 10 pounds. And I calculated the radius of the wheel to be 0.43 inches. So from there, the simple calculations, you get 68.8 inch ounces. So the ones we ended up selecting actually can do 370 inch ounces, which is a lot more, but that's to take care of any leeway with the weight of the robot for any friction. And yeah. So from here, I'm going to talk about the pneumatic spray system. Starts off with the CO2 tank. It's high pressure, about 1,000 psi. And the solenoid and the spray injector need about 100 psi, so you have to regulate it down. So we have a pneumatic regulator. And from there, it goes. The, about 100 psi goes to the solenoid, and when the beagle board turns it on, it allows air to pass through into one end of the spray injector. The other side has paint fed through a gravity-fed system, and from there it'll spray the paint. And here's just a picture of where everything actually sits on our robot. And just a note on the solenoid control, the beagle board can only have about or output about four to eight milliamps of current. And we needed about 100 milliamps for this. So we use a basic current amplification circuit. And um, there's not an exact specification for the current requirements for the solenoid, so it's okay to be dependent on the gain. And here's just the uh, project items list of the major components. There's no resistor capacitor values, obviously. And then as far as future developments are concerned, uh, we hope to get to this point, or get to the point where we can do autonomous vector printing. So we would have an Android application where a user can import images or draw images on a canvas and send the image to the BeagleBone and then making use of those, uh, those DSP core, that Neon DSP core that I mentioned and the high power uh, processor we could do imaging analysis using OpenCV or any other software toolkits. Uh, that way we could send the color images in any file format and do the necessary edge detection and uh, color conversion to give us an image that the robot can actually uh, print. And then also help out with our feedback system between the accelerometer values and the digital compass. And another thing we considered was also putting a camera on the robot and once again making use of that special media processor to track the robot using a camera as it moves along. Okay, so from there there's lots of ways we can improve the hardware. Decreasing the weight would um, make the lateral movements smoother and improve them. So there's many ways to do that, such as making a smaller tank size, decreasing the battery size, maybe going to carbon fiber instead of aluminum. And also, these are kind of low-end wheels. There's larger ones, which would help with the movement. And there's more expensive, better design ones 
also. So at the time, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask about the project. Oh, speak to 